Zeit. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Ross Patterson Revolution. By BlackRifleCoffee.com Man, I am out here. I am trying to do this podcast. I am trying to do this podcast. All you want is my life. All you want is my fucking life. Man, I'm just, I'm starting to get emotional, man. But this, man, this is, this is, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> man, I, oh. I'm trying to do a podcast. Oh, my God. <sighs> oh, calm down. <sighs> calm down. Man, you don't, you don't calm understand. Calm down. We're going to have to have a dialogue. Why would R. Patterson keep listeners chained up? Right. Making them listen to a show. Why would R. Patterson do that? Roush. Old Roush <laughs> Kelly, dude. R. Kelly went for it. Man. Roush. I found out his name was Robert. It's not Roush. Not, it's not Roush, It's huh? not Roush Kelly, which I thought <laughs> made the most sense. <laughs> he gave me everything I wanted him to give me and more. Yo, yeah. Yo, he yeah. He hung himself mm. a million times. Yep. Yep. Just yep, yep, with yep, the, he yep. just grabbed the, the noose from Jesse and he just. He kept hanging himself. But ironically, was, both uh, that's an interesting comparison. Both are from Chicago and both were actually in the same jail. So, I know. Yeah. I saw that. I saw that. Huh. Um, you know, I told you, I think, I think Michael Jackson would have done the same thing. They're so delusional. I don't. I, but it was the compassion of R. Kelly. <laughs> It was the passion. It wasn't compassion. It was just passion. It was he was such a victim. The compassion for wait, wait. The compassion was for himself. That's what I mean. Yeah. Like yeah. yeah. Yes, the interview was he passionate. Was the victim. But he was giving himself his own compassion. He used himself in the third person, which oh, you know yes. I love. You oh. know I'm a gigantic fan of that. I've always wanted to do that. Ross Patterson has always that. wanted to do that. Psychotherapists love that as well. Because it really is just like it's a key oh, it's good. to your insanity where it's good. they can just key right into that. Um, yeah. Anyways, huge fan of it. Oh, I, yeah. I, I, I loved the entire interview front to back. And I loved Gail King. Gail yeah, King was she great. She really did it for me. So she's really changed. So Roush Kelly went on CBS this morning. <laughs> Um, I only say Roush because so many people reminded me that I called him Roush that I was like, oh yeah, it's Roush Kelly. And the spellings are so great of what people send me. But um, yeah, so Roush Kelly went on CBS this morning with yep. Gail King, yep. did a 80 minute interview of which we could only see what, 10? I don't understand why we could only see 10. I needed to see all 80. I'm down to see all 80 and I'm, 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 <laughs> you could have released that as a doc oh. and put that on fucking lifetime I and I would have been of, there for it, James. I think because it's a lot of the same, um, no, no, I no, 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 I couldn't handle any more than what they I'm gave sorry? me. I, I could. And I'll tell you, I'll tell you where you, you could have picked back up in the interview for me. Sure. was when they went to his Ooh. apartments and he still had a Christmas tree up. Yeah. In March. Because that's in honor of his, of his mom, mom who died in 1993, who loved Christmas. So he keeps a Christmas tree up I all love that. What year an round thing. in his house. How original. She loved Christmas. Oh, I, she was the one? Everyone loves Christmas. She was the one that loved Christmas? <laughs> you really knew a lot about her, didn't you, Roush? <laughs> I knew she loved Christmas. Uh, he's just crazy. I guys. could have watched all Aggressive. of that. Gail said it was 90 degrees in his apartment because he had to sing that night or whatever, which that I've heard before from Whitney Houston. So I think that's a, a shared thing where she would never have the air conditioning on. Sure. Yeah. Uh, and, and things like that. But my question is, where was he singing that night, because when you just get out of jail, oh, yeah, yeah, all of his yeah. gigs are canceled. So he's not doing no. live shows. So no. is he going to the studio to sing? But, but I think he oh, got locked okay. out of that studio, remember? I think they, he's they soon put the... Gonna be lo- he's soon going to be locked out of everywhere, but, you know... 
Does party you think he beats any of this? Yes or no? Uh, no. Okay. I would have said maybe before this interview. But these people, these like sociopath, narcissistic, all right. these things, they really do believe that they're smarter. They really do believe that they're smart enough and amazing enough that if they just tell you. Sure. If they just come out and, t- and tell you they didn't do it, yeah. you'll believe them because you've done it so many times in the past. Right, right, right. He beat it already. That's how Michael Jackson went. Same. Yeah. He, he already beat it. Everyone already told him they're lying. You're awesome. You're acquitted. We're on your side. I hate, hate to inter- interrupt you here. What did you, what did you say he did? Who? Michael Jackson. He, be, he beat it. Oh, oh there it and, is. Oh, and I'll beat it. And, <laughs> oh, and I'll beat it. My favorite song. Oh, 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 and, oh, oh, and I'll beat it. My, the thing that was really interesting about that phrase <laughs> in particular, and I'm, I'm being totally serious here. So when he's talking to Gail King about beating the charges and he sure. says, man, I already beat that. I already beat that dog. I already beat that. When you say beat a charge or beat a rap, that means you ha- got away with it. Exactly. You didn't say I got acquitted or I was found not I guilty. I never did that. It was proven that I never exactly. did that. Exactly. I would never say the word I beat a case or the, or the phrase I beat a case simply for the fact of, hey, man, you shouldn't have beaten anything if you were just innocent. Like if you were just innocent, right. you'd be like, ah, I was innocent and that was it. Moving on. Right. But beating it says, hey, man, I've already, I, got, I got away with that. Got away with that. Yes. I already got away with it. I don't want to talk about that anymore. And the thing is, if you really didn't do it, you, you would be okay with talking about it. Right. That was something that I didn't do again. I was proven that it was proven time and time again. I didn't do that. Right. Yeah. And again, it goes back to the Michael Jackson documentary about the calm and measured person is going to be. More credible, more believable than bless you. Thank you. Roush you. I never sneeze like I that. I know. Gosh, what's going on? I don't know. There must be a little stardust in the air oh, from R. Kelly. A little Kelly. tickle, a little tickle Woo-hoo. tickle on your nose. Maybe I was just doing blow all morning. It could have been that, but it, yeah. you beat that already. I beat that. So uh, now what was I With s- Roush and Michael Jackson. Anyways, the calm and cool measured head will prevail, Demeanor, right? Yeah. So the, the person that gets emotional, gets crazy, beats his fists when he talks about, yeah. I've never, I've never done that, right? You're like, you're scaring me, right? Yeah. And that was, he just hung himself in that way over and over where you go, oh, wow, this is someone emotionally unstable, aggressive, yep. you know, short fuse. Live wire, Ooh. unpredictable, yeah. wild at heart, <laughs> fun at a party, right? Roush. Roush. Roush, Kelly. Uh, I, think, I think you're headed down a Michael Jackson path with this trial in this case mm-hmm. where, you know. I, Why, it, you think he's going to beat it? I, I don't know. Um, oh. If it's in Chicago, right? And look. People have a different vision of Chicago than what it really is, I think, you know. The north side is great. South side is not so great. Let's say you get to the south side, okay? Let's say that that trial is on the south side and it's an all-black jury. Right. I I think people underestimate how many fans R. Kelly has, black in particular, that he is a beloved figure where I think he has a shot. I think he has a shot to get off down there. I really do. Whereas, I think if you're anywhere else, if it's on the north side of Chicago, you're, you're fucking cooked. But I, I think R. Kelly is one of those people. Because again, if you go back in his history, right? He pissed on that girl. Mm-hmm. Was it 13 or 14 years old? Threw $100 bills at, like, at her on tape. Nothing mm-hmm. happened. He beat that trial. Because they couldn't prove it was him. Correct. Um, so, going through this, how are you going to prove that this existed or happened or it's it's gonna be a he said she said this right this is a tough one you're right they're and gonna it, and then there's gonna be somebody in the jury who is you know i believe i can fly just loves r kelly and it, all you need is one remember the cosby thing yeah cosby had a hung jury the first time around because of that yes and then it had to go back again and then he got buried in another fucking thing but i think you underestimate his 
fandom just because you're, you know, you probably don't like R. Kelly. No, I no. never have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and I, I did think, like Out of the Closet or that whole fucking shit. Yeah. I did think it was hilarious. Hilarious. But I did not like him right. at all. Um, so I think, I think you underestimate his power amongst the black audience. Nah, and, as, and as a white person, difference. I can't really, I can't really speak on it, but that's been my, my, my vibe of like, all right, shit. I mean, dude, when R. Kelly comes out on stage, man, it was electric back in the day where you were just like, shit, he was the dude, man. So you're going to um, be up against that. The difference is this, his victims are black and the message for them. And in this is that nobody cared about it for this long because the victims were all black women. And the black woman, you know, is top of the pyramid of things that you, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. But- of, of offensive nature, whatever, like how you, you can beat everything if you're a, a black woman. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, but uh, there was one thing he said that was interesting in there that, uh, that I think that they, he could bring up in trial that, that he said, yeah, you know, everything is fine and dandy until you need shoes. Or your fucking uncle needs shoes, or somebody needs something paid. I think, I think this. It, it, here's my honest opinion on R. Kelly and that whole shit. Okay, I, I think he's a fucking dirtbag who totally did all this shit with younger girls. I also don't think the younger girls and all of that shit cared till later on, or he was cheating, or whatever the fuck it was. And I think they were all getting paid. And so, you know, I'm not again. I'm saying that's it's it's horrific, but. So were the kids in the Michael Jackson doc, though, and and this is why a lot of people because after our show, but after our show aired, I I got a lot of people who hit me up saying, "Hey, man, I, I think I don't believe those those kids. I don't believe their parents. I don't believe that shit." And I think that's where it comes in of who you want to believe and why. And we got a ton of messages after that show where it was just like of people on his side, friends. We did a Drinking Bros episode. Fuck it. It airs t- tomorrow. T- or tonight. Tomorrow. Tonight. Jared and them, there was, and whoever he is dating, um, said they didn't, be- they didn't find the-, the-, the kids credible. How can I be friends with them? <laughs> well, I asked him on air. I said, look, why do, you- why do you think that's true? Well, I don't know. I turned it off after like 45 minutes. And I was yeah, like, ah. everyone that doesn't believe it has not seen it. Exactly. So I, I go, 45 minutes is where it really takes a hard right. You should probably go back and watch it because it's four fucking hours. You don't yeah. really get into anything until. Yeah. And he was like, oh, all right, cool. So I, I think you're up against that element as well, where, you know, the R. Kelly doc series. I didn't, I, I watched, what was it? Six nights or whatever the fuck it was. I think, I think we watched two of them. You only need to watch one of yeah, those, exactly. unfortunately. 100%. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but but in, in one of those that we watched was his ex-wife saying, you know, fuck, for six years I was married to him or whatever it was. He was a normal fucking dude, and then shit went south. Um, you know, it, the, it, I'm telling you, this is not as open and shut as I think it's, it's going to be. And I, 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 would fl- I, think, I think it's a coin toss in the end of whether or not he, he beats the case or not. I really do. So Jared and the person he's dating? Yes, but, they, but to be fair, they said they only watched the first 45 minutes, which it doesn't really take a turn until into that. Right. So, you know. That disappoints me a little bit. Same. And I was like, yo, man, I, you've got to sit down and watch the four hours and then come back and tell me. Like, you uh, have kids, Jared. <laughs> do you know what I'm saying? Kind no. of. He kind of has kids. Not really, but it's disturbing. Uh, only because, uh, yeah. And the radio stations, by the way, are, are, are one by one. Like, uh, uh, BBC was the first one to cancel Michael Jackson shit. Uh, Tor- uh, Canada is now canceling his music and all that other shit. All I think, just, yeah, I, I think the same will happen with R. Kelly, um, eventually where that'll be blocked out and be done. Um, I'm sure this trial will be graphic as fuck. We've given Michael Jackson the benefit of the doubt for so long. But I, I, so I think we've done it with R. Kelly, too. That's it's, it's what like, I mean. It's like you said with the Chappelle so, sketch. When you're laughing at shit like that. And, and it's, Michael Jackson. Yeah. Like, oh, the kids are everywhere and he's being weird. And it's in pop culture. You know. Um, 
I think you run into the last thing I'll say about it is I think you run into a really, really complicated issue when you're talking about vulnerable victims as far as poor um, and brainwashing. Yes. So um, with you know, a with, superstar like with the superstar. So it's like, yeah. And that's what they deal with, too, as far as why did it take them so long? Blah, blah, blah. Even with these kids in Michael Jackson, it's like they weren't unhappy right they were loving it yeah they had to come to terms with the fact that at such a young age they were loving this yeah and that they asked for it essentially and that they wanted it and they begged for it and i think by by, by the way i think it's the same on the other side with r kelly i really do so that's what i'm saying it's the same exact thing he may even be able to get some brainwashed girls to come in there and testify for him in the same way yeah and that's where you that's where a complicated issue comes comes up is when the victim is complicit really yeah um in a lot of ways in stockholm and all of this cuz you're just like well you were the, you were there with him you were having a good time you were never unhappy you weren't you know cry, you were only crying when you weren't with him right so they had to come to terms with that and they do say that in the documentary jared that um you know they it's taken them a lot a, a while right to get to that point because because th- they do say that he was awesome and loving and caring and they had a great time and they were also abused both of those things happened simultaneously and they had to come to grips with it yeah and um you know that's so that's so hard i think girls deal with that shit all the time when they're like well I was, I was dressed this way. I was drinking. I was making out with him. I did go back to his house, right? Yeah. And then something bad happened, right? Yeah. So that's a lot of the times where you're like, well, I did basically. I mean, I did everything wrong. Right. So it takes a while to be like, oh, that person was the aggressor. That person did the wrong thing, right? Right. So it, it's, a, it's a larger issue, but... Having kids and the Michael Jackson thing, all I personally needed was a couple people to be like, oh, yeah, everything you were thinking yeah, 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 was yeah. happening. <laughs> all I needed was a couple people. So that's personally where I'm at. And um, do I think they should get money or anything like this? No. But I think they should be believed. That's all. Yeah. I, I, don't, I don't want them to like get anything from the Michael Jackson estate, anything like this. Because again, they were, they were there, they were happy, they did it. They were vulnerable. Their family is to blame. There's a lot of different people to blame. And so they shouldn't get, you know, money or anything like that. Yeah. But I think at the very least, we can finish the fucking documentary. At the very least. Yeah, yeah, And at the very end, if you say, fuck them, go ahead. At least you listened to their entire story. Sure. Jared. Sure. Um, but yeah, I, I, uh, I, the last part I'll, I'll say about this with the R Kelly thing is he had a hard time making bail to get out. Right. And then we, we talked about it. He went to McDonald's afterwards for a power meeting right. with his lawyers, which right. I'm not going right. to, again, not going to shit on that. Da, da, oh. Da, da, da. oh, when you, get, I'm loving again, it too. We've said we, when we get out of a, of a night in yeah. jail, which we have. Yeah. The first thing you want is McDonald's. McDonald's. Big McDonald's. Mac, yeah. yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, but the stipulations of that when he finally made Bond were, hey, you've got 160K in back child support that's also in a court right now. If you don't pay that, you're going back to jail. Right now, he cannot pay that. So he's hours away from going back to jail. So we'll see what happens there. Um, do they pay him for those CBS things? No. Ah. I, you know what? I, actually, I don't know because that's such a big interview. Oh God! You do they, they do shop these stories? They pay him something. They do shop these stories. So, for what this brought into CBS News, I mean, because this is fucking everywhere right I now. Never turn on CBS this morning. Ever. ever. I had to go. <laughs> yeah. I didn't even know what time It'd it started. Like, yeah. And I was like, all right, cool. We'll tape this. So you know. I think they they probably paid him something. I would guess. I don't know about 160, but. Yeah, I, Definitely you know, a, a dent, a it's, chunk. Uh, to get an exclusive for him right out of prison, 
I, I would imagine they had to pay him something for that because it's... But at the same time, it sort of seemed like he wanted to talk. So I don't know if his, you know, maybe seemed like he really wanted to get it out. So I don't know. They probably had a negotiating <laughs> bargaining chip in that. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Either way, it was fun. I mean, that was, oh, was his fun. speech was like um, oh. Denzel's speech in training day. Yep. Yep. When, when he's talking mm. to the people about shooting, killing Ethan Hawke. Mm. I'm King Kong. King Kong ain't got shit on me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Whatever yeah. the fuck it is. Lying on Shot me. Shot me in the ass, Jake. They're lying on me. They're lying on me. Oh, it's great. It was great. All of it was great. Theater, television, all of it. Uh, and, I think and then Gail King was powerful as shit. Yeah. She didn't Jussie Smollett at all. She no. went she went in on it. She and stood just her like, ground. Yeah. She was like, it's really hard for me to believe you, Roush. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Kept calling him Roush. And he was like, it's Robert. Definitely Goddamn. did not call oh, him didn't? Roush Okay. Kelly. No. I didn't see. I didn't watch the whole thing. No, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't watch the whole thing. I'm just making judgment on it. Jared. <laughs> Uh, speaking of Jared, we got some sponsors to get to, and it's his co- it's company first and foremost, BlackRivalCoffee.com. Oh well, I mean, you're using the BRCC term, his company. Uh, pretty, he's one of the owners, pretty loosely. He's one of the owners, Jared. Yeah, he's one of the owners. Uh, Black Rifle Coffee is a premium roast to order coffee made with the hands of veterans and delivered out to the people across the land. They've got K cups. They've got bags. They've got things that'll make your mouth explode. They've also got a little grenade. They've got a little grenade uh, um, mug, by the way. Oh, okay. They were what sold out for a while. About? Those ceramic, that, that ceramic mug I had on the last show, they, have a, they had a, 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 like a sweet ceramic grenade mug there. Oh, I've seen that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. Get that. Um, you know, teas, all that shit. Like, mm-hmm. Wooby hoodies back in stock. Oh, really? Yeah, good to go. Go get it. Go, go, go get it. Go to yeah. blackriflecoffee.com. Type in the one time promo code REVOLUTION for 20% off. Use it on the Coffee Club of the Month program. Uh, they ship it right to your house on the same date of every single month. And those motherfuckers do not miss. Next up, we got ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros. I'm, I'm hyped up today. I'm, I was all about to combine all the sponsors' names into one. Yeah. Straight Razor Strike Force Ghostbed. Ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros. Check it out. I got the Ghostbed t shirt on today. Looks comfy. Great. It's, it's, Black is always slimming, which I love. Uh, uh, by the way, if you're not if you're not a subscriber of, of the show on YouTube, go subscribe. We're we are making the push hard, hard into video this year. So please subscribe to the show on YouTube. You can see our lovely faces. And you can also you can also see this uh T from uh, ghostbed.com. Um when you get a t shirt from a company, by the way. 99% of the time yeah they are fucking garbage if i get a yeah if I, if I get a gildan t-shirt or a fruit of the loon t-shirt i i wiped the i wiped the back of like my car windshield with it and then i throw it in the garbage can and i, I don't ever wear it so when they when ghost bed was just like hey man we're gonna send you some t-shirts and uh we're like we're making sweet teas i was like oh man are these gonna be and it turns out they're dope yeah whenever you say what is it nine line yeah yeah whenever you see nine line in the back you're like all right cool um Fits great, all that shit. Yeah. So way to go, Ghost Bed. You fucking you, you do you it. You did it. You're doing everything right. And, and here's the thing: if you are a company out there who is trying to make swag, swag uh, t-shirts, right for, for for your customers, spend. I know your margins are going to be like two dollars higher, right? And you're going to make two dollars less on your t-shirt. Spend the extra two dollars and Always. get the nicest t-shirt. That way people want to wear your product on their shirt everywhere they go and, and they it, don't give a fuck because it's a comfortable t-shirt. And it won't just end up in a thrift store. Yes. So, ghostbed.com. Uh you've done it. Congratulations and I love your t-shirts. I do. Uh not as much as I love those mattresses though. I got to be real. That's what I'm saying they're doing every thing right. Right. Yes. Every single facet. Yes. Big fan. Um even their marketing shit like is, is great. I, 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 look, I love this company. Ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros. Uh, obviously, I host that show as well. We're combining forces on this. And uh, we're giving you the best deals. If you are a military or first responder, you get an extra 15% off all of the products there, the mattress, the adjustable bases, the pillows, everything, you name it. Uh, just click the footer at the bottom of the page. Uh, 15% off, uh, including all their deals. So like if, if a match is a hundred bucks off or 200 bucks off, you're taking another fucking two hundo off of that. 
36 months, no interest, pay as you go program. No one is doing that. I, I cannot shout my love for ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros enough. I love those guys. Next up, we got strikeforceenergy.com. <laughs> boom, 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 boom. Shablankers. Shablankers. This is getting me going through the day. It's It really has gotten you roused I feel, up. I feel all roused up. Um, <laughs> you are roused. Yeah, if you want to get roused up, uh, go to strikeforceenergy.com. Four amazing flavors. Talking about lemon, orange, original, and make America grape again. 10-pack, 40-pack, 750-milliliter bottle. And, uh, man, I look, no carbs or sugars. This is the diet drink. Uh, if you're crashing in the middle of the afternoon, this is what you got you to use. Tasty, tiny little tin pouch. Boom, here it is. Rip it open, squeeze it in any liquid available. Good to go. You can kick the can, kids. They also have a subscription month, which uh, we, we have. We've had this forever. I think it's just the 40-pack. Just shows up at our house, man. It's fucking easy. Uh, go to strikeforceenergy.com. Use the promo code REVOLUTION for 20% off. That's good every time, and they ship everywhere in the entire world. Last but not least, talking about straightrazors.com. Ooh, that's a clean cut. Smooth. You right? There it is. <laughs> Oof. That that one is tough. It's tough. It's tough yeah. on me. That's tough yeah, on me. Did on, I on rouse you? Oh boy, you did roused. I rouse you? You did. You roused me all up and down. My whole body you roused me uh, with that. Does that mean I straight razors? By the way, I they're getting some free promos. On on the internet, there's somebody who's just been pulling all of your you like it. Yeah, there's I a still don't know who, there's a you like sure it. There's a way to find out who this person is. There's right? a you like it Instagram up now that started with almost. I, I think somebody's ripped every single you like it video. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and then they've also cut together our conversations sometimes to like make them dirtier than they are. <laughs> Which again, I'm here for all of it. I'm okay. <laughs> Something like I was talking about cutting my hand underwater or whatever. Yeah. And he cut it to where, or he or she, I don't know. Sure. Cut it to where I said what turns me on is underwater or something like that. Okay. Or I like to, I don't yeah. know. Yeah, why not? Why not? I'm okay with it. Yeah, look, if you're if you're trying to cut yourself underwater, you might as well use a straight razor from straightrazors.com. Oh, no. Yeah, why don't. not? No, you won't cut yourself. Shaving pregnant razor. bushes for years, too. <sighs> Jabes, that's it's just a fact. All right. We talk about facts on the show and then we report them to the audience. Shaving pregnant bushes for years. Since I think the cavemen have been using straightrazors.com. They have but typically it's a product for dudes. So they have a uh, shaving cream, beard oils, conditioners, shampoos, you name it. Their straight razors are second to none. Get a kit. Get a fucking kit for Father's Day this year. I know that's, I say that every year, but that, it's, it's the best. It's like Tombstone. I use their aftershave every day. It's the best goddamn thing on the planet, too, the smolder. Get on it. If, it's, if you don't like it, you can come and punch me in the gooch if you see me out. Go to straightrazors.com, promo code REVOLUTION, 20% off. Big, big savings there um, because their products are the best. And as always, you can buy my books at night. She cries while he rides his steed. And when darkness falls, he doesn't catch it. He doesn't catch it, James. He doesn't catch it. 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 Look, Audible, uh, iTunes, all that shit. Each, each audio book, six and a half hours. If you love the show, you'll love these. It's just a team of actors, so it's not like a movie. Um, fuck, this one's ranked number one. Uh, highest one of all time, Jay Blass. Speaking of, of this book, When Darkness Falls, doesn't catch it. This was banned by Amazon for a while, mm -hmm. um, for about three weeks. And mm -hmm. I had a lot of people saying, man, I, I haven't heard about this. And I was like, man, I, this is happening more than you think. It's just these stories aren't going public that much. Mm -hmm. um, like the, the Washington Post is owned by Jeff Bezos. Mm -hmm. They're not going to report shit like this. No. Uh, so this, this Tommy Robinson guy out of... The UK, who's kind of, I guess, what would you compare him to? They're Alex Jones. Okay. It's kind of who I would compare him to, yeah, I yeah, guess. Yeah. Um, was in jail. Uh, he was the Defense League leader. Um, always out and doing protests oh. and fucking. Uh, he says the BBC over there is fake news, right? So he's been doing okay. that whole thing for a while. Okay. Um, he published a book and uh, Amazon's removed that. They've banned it right now as well. Mm -hmm. And um, 
I mean, I, so. Hate speech? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> what are we going to say? How many days? 51 days. That um, it's been what? Banned. Banned. Yeah. Oh, my God. Nightmare. So it's just. Mine was shorter. I, what was mine? I think because About of you 22, guys. 22 because days. Because of you guys. Enough yeah, yeah, it was because of the listeners. contacted them and yeah. wrote messages and. I mean, and the co-author is of his book said this is the 21st century equivalent of Nazis taking out books from university libraries and burning them. Can you think of another scholarly book um, that's been banned on Amazon? Blah blah blah. Right? Um, look, I don't know what the answer is. I enjoyed seeing Alex Jones on Rogan the other day because he was back in in public at least. I, I all of this shit, he man. Was. He was crazy as shit, but he's, again, I view him nothing more as an entertainer. Yeah. Why not? This, all of this, this argument of freedom of speech again pops up to me where it's just like, is it really free if all of the outlets and avenues you have to disperse information are blocked? Um, and everybody says, oh, you can do your own website or whatever. You can't really get it out. You can't listen to it at the gym. Yeah, because or there's can't. companies that, I mean, Apple was taking him off. Everybody, they, they, you know, they banned so, all of his apps. Yeah, you so can have your own You can only go to, like then, Alex Jones, you can only go to Infowars.com to listen to him or whatever, right? Now you have this Tommy Robinson guy. Uh, and look, I, I don't know too much about him. I'm not over there. Mm-hmm. Um, it's what I read. But banning shit just to ban shit doesn't make any fucking sense to me. Uh, it's getting worse and worse. We, we've dealt with another thing recently where it's just like, oh, hey, if you could tone this down and tone this down and tone this oh, down. Oh, yeah. Behind the scenes, man, it is getting really mm-hmm. fucking rough. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the reason I bring this up is I was watching the new LeBron James show, um, the, the Shop. Shop. The Shop. Which, I, look, I hate LeBron James. Right. Um, I enjoy his show because of the realness of that format. Uh, they're, I mean, they're really not cutting too much there. And uh, the people he has on are interesting and open. And uh, Jamie Foxx was on Saturday night. And I enjoyed... I, I love Jamie Foxx. I mean... Uh, he is one of the most... Find me someone who doesn't love Jamie Foxx. He's one of the most talented dudes out there. Uh, great actor. Great musician. Great comedian. Great stand-up yes. comedian. Like, stand-up His singer. old school ta- stand-up. Mm-hmm. Like... People forget, because it's a different generation, people forget how great his stand-up was and everything else. And, like, that is a guy who can just do it all. He, he goes on the show, and he's, he's 52 now. I did okay. not know that. I did not know Jamie Foxx was you? How old do you think he was? I thought he was in his early 40s. And early wait, 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 40s? Here's why. is because he's always out, and he looks great. He, yeah. looks, he always looks great. He's always... The last 20 years, he looks like Jamie Foxx. Like, he's the a, motherfucker doesn't age. He's a black guy. Yeah, but, but no, LeBron James is the opposite. He looks like he's 100 years old. Um, That's true. So I look at the two of them, yeah. and it looked like Jamie Foxx was his son. I was just like, right, Jesus right, right. Christ. Um, and and they were, he was talking about that, and he was, he was open and honest about it, where he was just like, yo, man, I am fucking too old to go to clubs. And he goes, everybody, Jamie Foxx. Yeah, young, yeah, yeah. you know, whatever. Like, yeah, it's just like, look, I try to keep my mind young, and I talk to people and do shit and whatever, and I feel I feel we do the same shit. Um, and people never they're like, oh, that's old you are, whatever, right? Uh, but he was talking about uh, comedy in particular, where he they said, hey man, um, how do you feel at like as as a comic this day? It is almost impossible to be a comedian. I, and when I really thought about that statement, I was like, yes. It is. No matter what you say, someone... Because you can't make light of anything. No. People get... Uh, that's their biggest, you know, source of being offended is if you're making light right. of anything. Don't make light of cancer. Don't make light of, you know, loss or, you know, failing or anything. Right. Being different. Don't make light. Everything has to be taken seriously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, it's hard to be a comedian. I'm I, sure. I, I, man, it's impossible. They had a the who's the other guy on there? Um, fuck, man, he's a young up and comer. Carmichael, uh, Michael oh, Carmichael yeah. was on there. I don't mind him. 
I don't either. His it like, like I watched I watched stand-up's uh, his okay. stand up show is okay. It's it's weird. Yeah. It's a weird version of stand up where it's just like, man, are you telling jokes? Or are you not telling jokes? I've never seen a delivery like his. Right. And it's interesting. Mm-hmm. Um That's kind of why I like it. He's a young guy who if you're if that's your starting base right now, I I can't wait to see him in like five five years. Yeah. Where you're just like, Jesus Christ, where where will that go? If he's able to maintain it i don't know if you can in today's world um but when they were talking about comedy and how bad it's gotten and how you can't say anything and everybody's offended by everything and they and they brought up the kevin hart thing and dude jamie fox was like look he was aggressive about it he goes kevin hart is the nicest most hardest working motherfucker you will ever meet the fact that he even had to go through that shit mm-hmm. was crazy yeah um yeah and i to me with the banning of the books of Amazon, the shit that I've gone through behind the scenes with big, big people in Hollywood and publishers and everything else, this is only going to continue to get worse. And I don't know a way out of it. The people that I admire the most are the ones that are not doing it, but it's we're down to like two. I felt like when I watched Chappelle, the Chappelle stand-up, those two shows, mm-hmm. I felt like he didn't give a fuck. And like, you know, yeah. everybody loved it and he he's was able to get away. It yes. Somehow, somehow he's above it know. and was able to get away with it. Because right? he's the richest, he's the best. And he goes, fuck you. You don't want to. And I think it's the no phone thing. I think that's huge because a lot of, by the way, more and more standups, yeah. you go to these because shows and everybody is context, doing it. Yes. Taken yeah. out of context on a phone, put up on E! Entertainment or whatever. A lot of those things could have been. I mean, blown out of proportion. Right. And he is smart too. He's like, I just want us to be in here. You know, the Netflix, I'm choosing to put the whole thing up. Yeah, well, on, he's choosing to get $20 million exactly, a special. Exactly, but yeah. it's going to be in its entirety. You're going to see the joke from beginning to end. You're not going right. to hear one little snippet on somebody's phone. And um, I think that's huge. I do too. I just, uh, I found that conversation really fascinating because I, I don't, I was trying to think after that. I was like, all right, you have Chappelle. Um, Kevin Hart is, I, and I enjoy Kevin Hart's stand-up, but now he's kind of neutered at this point because we can't go back and talk about gays or, you know. And that's, that's fine, but I think for him moving forward. It is and it isn't, but it, like, dude, if you look at how aggressive Chappelle's was, like. I think he was talking about. He was, people, yeah, yeah. Uh, like you name it, he was going for it, so. But that's his brand. You know, and it um, is, but Kevin that... Hart was trying to move out of that, you know, underground, I only do Netflix specials when the fuck I want to, to a big movie star that's starring with The Rock in everything. So once you step over that threshold, and I think Chappelle knows that all too well. Yeah. When you step over that yeah. threshold of I don't just do comedy when the fuck I want to do it. Right. Is when you have to answer to that kind of stuff. So can you be a comedian? Yeah. But you have to you have to kind of say no to those The Rock movies. Right. If you want to continue to do it in the way that you want to do it. Yeah. And I, that's I, true of everything, right? It is. So it depends on the... You can take the, the money, you can take the marble. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or yeah, you yeah. can t- continue to do your shit the way you want to do it. Yeah. On a uh, podcast or on a, on a Netflix yeah, 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 yeah. special yeah. that you direct and you are <laughs> in complete control. And that's the only way to, to make it in, uh, to be truthful and to be real is to write your own ticket in the world right now. And I, by the way, I want to correct myself. I think it's Gerard Car- Carmichael. Um, yeah. What'd you say? I, I think I said Michael. Um, oh, his last uh, sorry, name is we, Carmichael. Right? Yeah, 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 but but I've had a lot of Michael Jackson on the mind, so uh, forgive me. I, I believe it's Gerard Carmichael. Uh, Carmichael, yeah. He's not a guy that he's still not a guy that you would recognize to me. Um, like walking down the street. Uh, yeah, no. He's on the come up in a great way, but um, people love his show. It is Jamar, G- Gerard Car- Carmichael. Yeah. yeah. Um, um, but uh, they did. It was a small audience, very, very small audience, and it never caught. It got canceled, mm-hmm. and his standup is again really fucking out there. I haven't seen anything like that in a while come up. Like you know, and look, I did stand up for fuck man eight years, 
some of the things that I was doing during it were because I was bored with, I, I did not like that there was 30 or 40 people in the audience some nights. Um, not, you know, it's not by my control. It's by wherever you are, wherever the club is, you know, are you doing stand up on a Tuesday or something like that? Even at the big clubs in like LA, it's like that sometimes some nights you have that. And like, I would do weird shit that was just for me some nights. And like, that's when I had some of my most fun. Mm -hmm. That's the way I feel about his stand up, where I can't tell if he's doing it for him or an audience. And that's when it gets really interesting to me where it's just like, oh, all right, cool. Uh, cause if you go out and bomb with your set, right, whatever that is, and you wrote these jokes and you went there and whatever, that's, that, that's a harder one to accept rather than, you know, I really don't care what the audience thinks tonight. I'm just going to do what I want. And like, there's some people that I came up with or saw on the come up who were doing shit like that. Like, uh, Nick Thune, a big, yeah. big, big fan of Nick Thune. And, but I always thought he was hilarious for that reason. Yes. Um, and like, I, I searched him out because I wanted him to do these movies. I just think he's a brilliant dude. And uh, I s went to the nth of the world to get him to do these movies. Because he, he was with uh, Dave Becky, who is uh, Louis C.K.'s manager. And probably one of the most powerful comedic forces there is, Dave Becky. And I, I just, yeah, I couldn't get past him. I wasn't famous enough to, to try to get in. And, mm -hmm. you know. And uh, finally, I, I did and was able to, to circumvent it and get to Nick directly. And when I met him and he did the movies, like he just marched to his own beat and yeah. had his own shit. Yeah. And it was amazing. And he's an mm -hmm. awesome dude. Mm -hmm. I felt that way about um, uh, that Demetrius guy. Fuck was his name? He ended up doing. Dimitri Martin. Yes. Dimitri yeah. Martin. Um, he ended up doing something on Comedy Central, but like. It was this underground night of comedy that we, we used to go to uh, in, in El Cid. It was like a Mexican restaurant um, yeah, with like weird comedians and like intermissions of like girls who were taking chainsaws to like metal mm -hmm. bras and shit like that. Just so it would spit out sparks into the crowd and like you never really knew what you were going to get. And it was all like super famous people who would just go see these weird shows. Is it like the Largo inside El Cid? Where it's just El Cid. It was in the basement. Yeah, yeah. It was, in it the was basement. like this. Uh, yeah. I, I mean, you, you walk, you had to go, you would walk down in the basement yeah, and get beers upstairs down, yeah. and then go down. And it was weird. I worked there for a second. Oh, you did? Okay. So it, it was, uh, I want to say it was like Tuesday nights too. Mm -hmm. I think it was Tuesday nights. And a friend of mine used to host it. So I would always go and I caught his stand up too in the beginning where he was playing like accordions and shit on stage. And it was just like, you didn't know what the fuck was going to happen. I don't know if you can get away with doing that now. I don't know if you could, like a, like a Patrice O'Neill. Uh, is there room for a new guy to pop out and do shit like that anymore? Because of the way comedy has changed and, and the way people's perception of jokes and the culture and everything has changed. Is there, is there room anymore for somebody like that to emerge? Unless you're, I mean, if you're doing a podcast, you can, I guess. But... Will a Netflix still buy a guy like that? Or will a HBO still do a one-hour special with a guy like that? I was really shocked at the numbers of the comedians who were making the most money when I was just like, that guy, Mancuso, or oh my, God, wife's my wife's sauce, sauce, Sebastian. So fucking so thick. So fucking thick. And it, but he and wasn't even saying fucking. I know. Yeah, yeah, it was very other clean. Other comedians like, cite him as like, a big one, you know, they'll be like Chappelle, Sebastian. And I'm like, how are they in the same no. fucking sentence? But, but Sebastian made, what was it? $16.7 million last I guess year. That's why he's a clean You're bowing down to the God, but it's a, he's a clean old school 1980s comedian who is, you know, just using Italian stereotypes to do shit or whatever. And it's just like, all right, cool. And, and where everything seems like a bit where, the thing I love about Chappelle. I don't like a lot of noise at the pool. <laughs> How about you? I like it to be quiet. Is that a joke? Is that a joke? Is that it? That's the whole bit. It's actually and these kids are running around. I like it quiet. That's actually an awesome impression, by the way. You're welcome. Yeah. yeah. Un unexpected, but an awesome impression. <laughs> I've never heard you do that. <laughs> I've been working on a Sebastian. <laughs> but... <laughs> 
But do those guys, if you're not a Sebastian or not a, you know, <laughs> fuck, Ellen just did a couple of specials on Netflix. Like, right. You know, and the, the, the other guy that everybody loves, John, was it John Mulaney or Mulaney. M- Mulvaney or I hate to say that I don't mind him, but go ahead. I, I can't. You hate him. Can't stand so it. So I'm not going to talk about it, but can't say no, Mulaney. you can, you can John Mulaney. Yeah. Yeah. To me, it's just the epitome of white. Across the board of just, yeah, white spoiled Jew kid. I, I can't, yeah. I can't do it. Yeah. I can't do it. Um, whereas I like real shit and uh, aggressive shit. Let me ask you: Did you like Andy Kaufman? Was that no. your jam at all? Me neither. No. So because I, I, when I don't... you talk about someone doing something just for themselves and like you know, if it translates, it translates fine. I think there is a line. Where, there, there is, you know, there is a line to... where, well, here's the thing about Andy Coffin, right? Cause I, I, and I've heard this for a long time. If you get hot as a comedian, your life spans about 10 years before people get sick of your shtick. I a hundred percent think that's true in stand up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Um, and there, and the reason being is, uh, Dane, Dane Cook right now is making a comeback. So he's been on all this shit. You've seen him right everywhere. Yeah. Um, and he's making his big comeback and doing all this shit. I didn't know somebody, his manager stole like 17 million from him or something crazy. Um, so I don't know if it's financial or just for the love of stand up, but like oh, yeah. Dane Cook is making a comeback. Mm-hmm. When Dane Cook first started, like, because every, every comedian will shit on Dane Cook. I'm actually not going to. When Dane Cook first started, I felt that style of comedy at that time was necessary to progress. Stand up and comedy. Yes. He was, and people will forget this, but if you go back and look at his specials, he was selling out no, Madison Square first, Garden in minutes. He was rock star comedian. comedian yeah. Besides like Steve Martin. Because I look, Steve Martin still sold no, out. but like rock star, spiky hair. like Yeah, fuck you. Besides Dice too. So it's like Dice. Dice yeah, yeah, and yeah. then he was kind of trying to emulate Dice and ended up eclipsing him. Well, he, but because here, here's time. the thing. Like he was putting... If you go back and watch Dane Cook's old specials, right? He was putting, and this is the first time I've ever seen this, where he put a stage in the middle. Yeah, he did in the round. like In the round, and then went around and talked to everybody versus, hey, I'm on a stage at a football stadium. You guys are all in the back. That's what it is. Vicious circle or something. Exactly, yeah. yeah. And when you go and watch how hard that is, and you're you're selling out Madison Square Garden every night, and he he was the first one to conquer social media as well because he was doing it all off of MySpace. Um, yeah, and he was like on the Billboard charts, like oh three, yeah, 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 number yeah. three on the Billboard Every charts. Like he was a album he did rock was star, rock star, and I, his but it was style too much. <laughs> was. But you, could you guys stick it? You guys stick of the, the shtick after a while, right? Um, but t- to me now, if you go watch Kevin Hart's specials, they're modeled after Dane Cook's old specials. To be honest with you, like yeah, there's fucking pyrotechnics yeah, and yeah. crazy shit and everything that wouldn't have been possible without dane cook doing it first right to see that it is possible that like oh shit you can keep twenty thousand people engaged in an arena like that to me personally as a comedian that that is next to impossible because i can hear voices every single place you are to try to keep twenty thousand people interested in a comedian who's just talking on a stage is really fucking difficult the fact that dane's been able to do it kevin hart's been able to do it is is amazing i mean i mean amazing Chappelle doesn't do it for that exact reason of that's too many fucking people bro like it's too, and he's not that kind of comedian he no. doesn't dump water on himself and no. fucking hump the chair like he maybe like does one mime of something but for the a most lot of part, times he sits just, down or he's smoking he's, a cigarette or yeah, a so vape pen or something his, Right. Kind of comedy. It sounds like Dane, by the way, on this next tour is paring it down a little bit. But why? Because I don't think he we'll I, I, I don't I think don't, he has a choice because yeah, you can't gonna you go can't out. sell out. anymore. Yeah, yeah. You can't. And so with all of that, with this next group of comedians, whoever it's going to be like, I, I don't know, man, I, I think it's. I'm starting to think it's too neutered for I don't know how a, a young guy with an original voice burst out onto the scene without having established something like, look, this podcast, you listen to it all the time. It's on three days a week. It, it's been set in stone for two years now, how aggressive this is. I don't give a fuck. Um, but I've established that already. Like I'm not a young 22 year old dude who's trying to get fucking 
you know, but SNL the other thing is- or, or trying to get a stand up special on HBO. I don't care about that shit anymore. Right. Well, we're not. The thing is, like I've said, in order to continue to do the show the way that we do it, we have to say no to a lot of things. Yeah. Right. Oh, that yeah. They're yeah, going yeah. to. And it's not the rock or anything like that, but you have to say no to certain things that are going to, that you will be beholden to. And that's just whatever. And you're saying with these comedians, how are they ever going to da da da? And that's the thing you, I I don't think you'll be able to take the rock type of money. Yeah. And and continue to do what you want to do. Even us, we've run into it with sponsors on the show. It's only happened a couple of times who have been like, Hey, and they're no longer sponsors, but they've been like, Hey, you can't fucking say this or this or this or whatever. And it's just like, all right, well, cool. Bye. If you listen to the show, yeah, mm-hmm. you know what it is. So fuck off. Yeah. Um, and uh, this one guy was like, you can't tell so-and-so to fuck off. And I was like, yeah, I, I just did. kind of can because my shows will still be on. It doesn't you matter. You can't yeah. take anything away from me. Right. And this, by the way, is the biggest key to all of this. Mm-hmm. So if you're a young kid who doesn't have anything, but wants to be aggressive, wants to have a fucking, you come out and be the next Chappelle. If you have nothing and then all of this is dangled to you, how do you stay true to yourself and true to your voice and keep going like that? To me, it almost seems next to impossible. And, and, and again, this was just from me watching that fucking stupid LeBron show. I mean, or you could do it. Like when I sat there, when, when I sat there and watched all of these guys talking about it, I was just like, man, I don't know. I don't know how you do it in today's. Or you could do it like Dalia, Brian, Brendan. So you have your podcast. And you're talking about, say, say the full name. Fighter and the Kid, Brendan Brian Shaw, Callen, Brian right. Callen, but even Chris Brian, Dalia. Even Brian Callen. I, I just saw a, a trailer for his new stand-up thing that mm-hmm. is going to iTunes and then somewhere else. Mm-hmm. Why isn't he on Netflix? Why isn't he on um, HBO or Showtime? Or, like, I don't understand that. The rest of those guys are. I think maybe because of, honestly, the show. Well, Brendan does, did a Showtime special, I think. Didn't he? Yeah. Or he did yeah, Netflix. He's, taping, he's about to tape Netflix. one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. It's Showtime. He's Showtime. about to tape one. I think uh, cause he's, he's, he's got to deal with Showtime. But yeah, like, so he's in that machine. But I think, um, I don't know. I don't know what the answer is. But Talon's last special that I saw on Showtime, I, I personally loved it. And I thought it was rad. And I was like, oh, dude, he's going to do like nine more of these. Um, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know the answer. But this, yeah, again, all of this was triggered by that, that, that show in the shop. And I was watching all these comedians sit around and talking about it. Like for Jamie Foxx, he's 52. Mm-hmm. He does not have to worry about anything anymore of, of any of that stupid shit. Right. Um, Whereas everybody else does. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, fuck, man. Me going through what I went through this last week with some other shit, I was just like, really, motherfucker? Like, it, it is happening. And it is, again, books are getting banned. Things are getting censored. I don't things really, I don't really think people know. I, I don't really think people know what goes on behind the scenes. How it's just, they're trying to get you to conform to all of this shit behind the scenes and it's affecting artists across the board, be it comedians or uh, authors or, I mean, it's, it is crazy, man, behind the scenes, what is happening. Like you, you're almost forced to do all of this shit yourself and then say, fuck it to all of it. Mm-hmm. Um, luckily you have YouTube and, you know, things like that and yeah, podcasts yeah, and all this yeah. stuff. But even then, How if they decide, so, yeah. if they decide like Alex Jones, Hey man, we're pulling all your shit. Mm-hmm. Then what do you do after that? It's really up to them. Yes. You're st- it's still, that there is still no freedom of speech involved in it where it's like, eh, it is. If you want to go out and fucking do your podcast out in the street and have, you know, yeah, and just some passerby people. Yeah. Or do like <laughs> Alex Jones, like a website, like no one's going to fucking go to. Yeah. Except for the crazies. So good job. Because they pulled his app. Yeah. His app is gone. So yeah. like you can't even download the InfoWars app and then watch it on there you have to physically go into either your phone and leave it open or your you know a laptop or a hard top and just type it in or fucking mirror it on your apple tv or whatever uh it's getting wild out there in the, in, the, in these streets and i'm look the reason i'm telling you this whole fucking long story is like it's getting it's only going to get worse mm. uh worse and worse and worse and worse and worse um 
you got a big election coming up. And the shit that's going to be going down this summer with these, you know, another fucking person entered the goddamn Democratic race. That Hickenlooper guy. Um, Hickenlooper. Yeah. Terrible. Terrible. Lot. Like, I can't. Oh, President, uh, President Hickenlooper is here. Oh, Hicksy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Old Hicksy. <laughs> so what? you're up to, what, 17 now? And then Beto and Bi- Biden are still deciding. So that could be 19. Could be 19 when it's all said and done. Biden's out. He's not going to do it. But that's going to be a crazier summer. All the shit's going to be ramped up even more over the summer. And then, and then whoever that person is that comes out from that 19 and then is going against Trump. Imagine that news cycle. For 2020, Ugh. people are really going to start picking sides. And that's when I think more and more censorship is going to happen yeah. because they don't want him getting reelected. So like anybody who's remotely right and all this other shit, like if you don't think this is happening, it is. Oh, it is. I only get mad when it affects me personally, but yeah. Oh, it's happening. So I, I... it's happening. <laughs> I only got mad when it affected us with the books, things like this. Yeah. YouTube takes down stuff or whatever, but uh, oh yeah, it's happening. Yeah, yeah, and you oh, feel yeah. hopeless, and you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I can't do anything you know about I it. Shut, you know, I shut down if it gets too hopeless. Yeah, yeah, of course, of I course. Just completely shut down, and I, uh, I like go the, into play pretend world yeah, yeah, where everything's yeah. fine. I know, because <laughs> now you're getting strikes on YouTube, by the way, and 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 Twitter. That's that's the other thing is uh, uh, you're getting strikes on Twitter and YouTube. So if you get three, they pull your channel down, right? Okay. Um, one of them was I put a clip of my own movie from Darnell Dawkins, Mouth Guitar Legend, mm-hmm. in my uh, in a show, or I believe you because you, you edit the show, you'd put yeah. it in a show, right? Yeah, is the Star Spangled Banner or something? At the yeah, 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 for yeah, yeah, for yeah. Darnell Dawkins, uh, Mouth Guitar Legend. Uh, I got a strike from that, right? Our channel got a strike, and then you have a a chance to explain yourself. Yes, or something. Yeah, but it's you never talk to anybody on the phone. No. You just and you never will again. No, 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 no. Ever. No. <laughs> so the days of talking to people on the phone are long gone. All over. You gotta mm. send in an email and wait three to six business days and somebody will get back to you. Maybe they'll call you. So I had to write in and say, Hey man, I, I wrote and directed and starred in this movie. That's me in the clip. Like I, I'm using mm-hmm. it for my own personal use or whatever. But because I had sold the movie to, you know, to a studio, it was an independent film that the studio owned the rights to. Uh, they said no. The studio owns the rights to this. Uh, I think it was Film Buff owns the rights to Darnell Dog's Mouth Guitar Legend. And they were like, the studio owns the rights to this. So, uh, no, you get a strike. And they were like, you know, if you'd like to petition the company directly, you can through checking off whatever boxes and all that shit. And I go, mm-hmm. yes, yes, I would. Um, yeah. I'd, be, I'd love to hear what Film Buff has to say about me giving free promotion to a fucking movie, which they're, yeah. they're making 30% off of. Uh, I'd love to hear their opinion mm-hmm. on this. This went on for like six months. I finally got a message back that said, we've decided to remove the strike from your channel and Film Buff has agreed to let you use your own Have clip they? and your own fucking uh-huh. thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, you motherfuckers. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so that, like, even that happens where you're just like, dude, I can't even use a clip of myself to promote myself for my, the thing that I wrote. Right. And no. Right. Somebody else owns that now, Mr. Patterson. They own you. So if you could just uh, kindly remove your balls and then tuck your dick back inside your own asshole, yeah. uh, that would be great. That would, that would just be swell. So shit like that even goes down when you're just like, God damn it, man. Yeah. Um, so wait, buckle up, kids, is what I'm saying. 2019 and 2020, you're going to start to see more and more of these people, these Tommy Robinsons and all of this shit uh, slowly getting removed, and you won't know. Uh, Trump Jr. P- posts about it all the time. Uh, Donald Trump Jr. posts about it all the time. He gets shit removed all the time from like Instagram, and he's just like, "Oh, I'm sure here, but no, but it's like for basic shit." No, like, no, I mean, I'm sure because of everything that's going on. I know, but <laughs> like it's, they just like, no, nope, you don't get to talk. Because what he'll do is he'll repost it, yeah, yeah, and then if if you know they take it down. Uh, somebody else in the White House will repost it and then they'll Instagram right, will feel right. bad and then they'll put it back up. Mm-hmm. Like, um, oof, imagine what this is going to be like coming up but this year. Exciting time to have a podcast again, but fuck, it's going to get, it's going to get ugly out there. It's yeah. going to get real yeah. fucking ugly yeah. out there. Yeah. Um, I, li- that- I just listened to this thing about uh, Lindsey Graham and they were like, what happened to Lindsey Graham? 
he used to hate Donald Trump. <laughs> and so they're like calling him like they're saying that he has like a men- something mentally wrong with him. Right. Because he's supporting the president now. It's real. Huh. It's New York Times, obviously. Yeah. But it's yeah, called yeah, yeah, yeah. What Happened to Lindsey Graham? And they're just trying to make him seem like this crackpot crazy person. Right. And in the interview, he's trying to say, no, I, you know, I was, I wasn't the biggest fan in the campaign, but when he was elected, he is the president. I now have to support him. That's my job. Job. Yeah. Yeah. And was, you know, really rational about it. And they still were like, but what, what's going on with you? <laughs> you know, <laughs> they try and make it seem like this. You're insane. Mm-hmm. Like you've lost, if you are supporting the president in any way, you have lost your mind. Yeah. And yeah, we're it's... the New York Times and we're very rational. And we just want to know what happened to you, Lindsey. Dude, that's crazy, man. And he just kept being like, well, I mean. <laughs> well, because uh, a lot Look. of those, a lot of these articles are op-ed pieces, opinion pieces, and like people don't know it. So they'll read an no, article they read and it be as like, as oh, it's hey, fact. It's, yeah. as if it's news. Because one person did a, a piece. Right. And there's a million people working, you know, for the New York Times. A million reporters. Nuts. But it's, if you say, if you have New York Times in front of behind whatever, yeah, yeah, you're Matt, a credible source. Matt was uh, Matt was in the Washington Post yesterday. Um, obviously, my co-host on yeah, Drinking Bros. I think uh, I saw that. I did, and I was like, "Hey, man, you didn't tell me you did a Washington Post article." Um, and I called him, and he goes, "I didn't." Like I did the Rolling Stone one, and I was like, "Oh fuck!" I did an interview with Rolling Stone as well for Matt. This was maybe I want to say six months ago, right? right. Uh, I'd come up late at night. And you were like, who are you talking to on the phone? I was like, I do that 20 minute interview with fucking Rolling Stone. Right. Uh, Rolling Stone is caving. Like they're, uh, they're, they're going. The, yeah. Down, under. Yeah. They'll probably be alive for by the end of this year. I would say they're probably out of business, to be honest with you. Um, just because digital is taking mm-hmm. over and they're not paying their employees, all the shit, blah, blah, blah. They weren't paying this reporter. He had to take this story and go freelance it somewhere else. And uh, Washington Post. And they wanted to do this thing on like millennials and guns or whatever. So like, I mean, they completely changed the article, jacked the article and did this whole fucking shit. Mm-hmm. And, you know, that got spread around and people were looking at this like this was, oh, man, this is serious journalism. Oh, and yeah. a guy from The Washington Post. No, that was a guy from The Rolling Stone lost his job there who had a sort of a story. And then The Washington Post wanted him to fit this other story into it. So right. that's kind of what they made it into. And I was like, oh, fuck, I remember doing that. That was a long goddamn time ago. That shit happens. Right. You're just like, ah, all right, sweet. But how do you explain that to anybody else? Where you're just like, no, 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 then you don't, you, you don't understand. Crazy. You start yeah. sounding crazy. Where it was just like, and hey, and then I said to this guy, and they were all in cahoots. And you're like, okay, Alex Jones. Yeah, which is like once you say any, you know. So whoever reads that article, um, that was originally a Rolling Stone piece that was solely about Matt and no one else. Whatever the fuck they turned that into at the Washington Post, just know that that it reporter was like aggressiveness of Instagram, yeah, or, uh, uh, with millennials and yeah, guns or whatever, yeah. and it was just like, man, that was not the interview we did, and that was for Rolling Stone for Matt, and then you know he, they sandwiched that into some mm. weird fucking piece about millennials using guns on Instagram, and you're just like, all right, uh, you, I, it, again, it sounds crazy to say that when you say that to people of like what. Mm-hmm. There's no way I believe you. It's like, no, that's that's what really happened. Yeah. But you read it and it looks professional and you see the Washington Post at the top of the oh, page yeah. and you're like, oh, fuck, this is this is a real. No, that, that wasn't that wasn't even half the story of what you're getting right now. Um, and again, all of this is happening over and over and over again. And I don't know where the train stops, Jabes, before it's just pure insanity. Yeah, I could. I look enough DMT. We could turn this into an Alex Jones sitch in a few years. You know, really, really, really go after them and conspiracies. God. I'm sure there's people listening at home going, "Man, what the fuck is Ross talking about? This can't be true." It it is all of this is yeah. All of this is going on right now. Yeah. Um, and then after after the next big thing comes out, we will sit and do a show, and I'll tell you what really fucking happened with yeah. that goddamn thing. Yeah. Because I I am done with. That the, the, that side of the the world, and uh, I will I'll burn it down and let you know what really happened on that fucking thing. Um, and then you can take your thoughts and prayers and send them to <laughs> stuff them. Yeah, 
you can you can take your thoughts and prayers and, and send them to whoever you think you're sending them to because it it, it is not it goes right to Roush. Yeah, it goes it all it goes go, to it Roush. It all goes to Roush Kelly. Even today with fucking Roush Kelly, dude. This is what they live for. This is you hope to have shit like this on there where you're just like, yeah. He's mentally unstable. He has issues. He's a fucking This is criminal, what the news and wants. They're letting him just go. Yeah. They're just giving him rope. It's it's uh, <laughs> it's crazy, crazy. The only person I I could say that switched was we watched that uh, Richard Pryor doc, and I'm not like everybody always says Richard Pryor's a king and he's the greatest of all time. I'm not in that camp. Um, and I you know from a comedian standpoint, everybody comedian would be like, oh no, fuck you. No, I don't like. And after watching that doc, I think I think what he did was bold. Going from a clean comedian uh-huh. that Cosby wanted him to mm-hmm. be to switching and saying, fuck you, here's who I really am. And I thought that was the awesome part of Richard Pryor. But, you know, that's the last person who's switched that dramatically. Yeah. And he did it early on. Yeah. You can't do he was it young. after you've yeah, already. Yeah, yeah, he was and young. And he wasn't big yet. No. You know? So you have to do it before. You know, you have to get the tattoos, the sleeve, before people see you without the sleeve. Right, right, right. You know what I'm saying? When, when enough people have seen you completely no tats you cannot then show up with a full neck and sleeve tattoo which people yeah do sometimes um but it's that sort of thing like once you are right who you are at a certain level of success yep well, people aren't really going to let you change from that no no not at all um and uh I, look we'll give the revolutionary figure of the day today to quentin tarantino um He's got. I, I just read. This is breaking news right now. That it, it, they think his movie is going to screen at Cannes um, in May, which I hope it does. It comes out this summer. Yeah, I'm really, really looking forward to it. I, I know he took a lot of heat for. He takes heat for all of his shit. To he be honest with you, fuck. doesn't give a fuck. And he's probably the last filmmaker we have left who is just like fuck you. Fuck you. Here's what I'm doing, and he's still able to do it at a studio level, which is. A, a fucking miracle right now, like an absolute miracle. And everything that I've railed about today, this this is the only guy, film director wise, who is still like, no, fuck you, I'm gonna do what I want, and you're either gonna pay for it or I'm gonna get somebody independently to pay for it. And I'm gonna put this shit out, and it's and it's gonna rock your tits off. Mm-hmm. Um, that's exactly what he said about this new movie. Um, and that's exactly what he said about his career. Mm-hmm. I think he's got what one more after this, where he said, I'm going to throw down the gauntlet. Mm-hmm. I've, I will have made, I think, ten, Five more? Ten, yeah, 10 movies total. 10 movies I total. Think, and, and say, hey, go back and try to beat my fucking 10 and see what happens. Um, part of me, and the reason I give him the revolutionary figure of the day is, part of me wonders, and I'd kill to have him on the show, is if he knows what's going on in today's world and realize everything else is being censored and neutered. So where he's like, man, I think I could probably get away with two more of these. And then right off into the sunset. And then you'd be an even bigger legend. Because if you look back at this, this catalog of movies, now you look back at it and be like, oh, man, there is never going to be another motherfucker like this again. Yeah. Like if, if Jordan would have walked off the court after that game six, Drano, Splappa, mm-hmm. game winner, never came back again. You, I, I think it would have been undebatable. For, at, for the end of time that Jordan was the greatest of all time. Now you left a little crack in the door open because he came back and played for the Wizards. Like if Tarantino came back and made a fucking, you know, How to Train Your Dragon or something, like a mm-hmm. kid's movie, to be like, mm-hmm. God damn it, no. Damn it, you could have just walked, walked away the court. And I, I hope that's what he does. I hope this like movie... Like Jeter, didn't he hit he that put, You know run? Luke Perry's in this fucking movie. Yeah. Like... Yeah, we said that. Amazing. Yeah. Amazing. Uh, Burt Reynolds was supposed to be in it too. I know. Burt died right before they were shooting. Crazy. Um, But even like, dude, he'll still go back and find people like that. And uh, man, I can't wait for this. This announcement is awesome. I'm super stoked about this movie. It's probably the, you know, again, we talked about Jordan Peele's Us Mm -hmm. and this. I'm really, really really looking forward to it. So uh, I'm amped to see that, that it's a can because that means if you, if you're going to can, you think it's going to be a big blockbuster of like, all right, great. Fuck you oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. around the world. Mm-hmm. Uh, Cause everybody there, you got some judgy motherfuckers. It's over gotta in can. be, we've got, we've got Leo and Brad, like 
It's got to be. You got Margot Robbie in it. Yeah, it's got to be. It's got to be. Oh yeah, it's got to be amazing. So she's in it. Yeah. Um. Either way, I'm. I'm. I love him, and I hope it's it's awesome. And I don't know what his last movie is going to be, but I hope it's the most aggressive movie of his entire career. Anyway. Oh yeah. Oh, if you're leaving <laughs> anyway, what are you going to take away from me? <laughs> oh, I hope. So I hope. I. I'd be interested. I mean, he parties. He's hard. Oh, yeah, so, yeah. So he, he'd be he'd be down for a convo about it, I bet. Because a lot of his crew members have worked on my movies over the years. And like I've asked, it's the same question I ask every time. I'm like, what's he, what's he really like? And we're like, dude, he parties, parties, but he treats you with respect and you're like family and like everybody's able to party. All you're, you're allowed to bring your wife and kids and all that shit down and, and stay or whatever. Just do your fucking job. When you're on set, just do your fucking job. Other than that, I don't give a shit what goes down. Like, just support my vision. Do yeah. your fucking job. And you can do whatever you want after that. And you can come over to my house. Like, I guess he would throw, like, these fucking pool parties all the time. Like, on the yeah. last movie, we was shot in, like, Mexico or something. Um, and it was just like, hey, bring your kids over. Bring whatever over. And everybody was raging all day, like, Saturday and Sunday. You go back to work Monday. Congratulations. We're fucking working. And that's that's what this is. So, um, the people that have stayed with him or have been with him a long time. Obviously, he only shoots a movie every, you know, three, four years or whatever it is. And his crew members need work outside of those. You know, you're not making a living forever off of just one no. Quentin Tarantino movie, right? Which is how I've got to work with him. But like, uh, every one of them has said, "Man, if if that guy just worked year round, I would never leave his never side leave. and just work with him." There forever. was this bar we used to go to downtown. I forget the name of it, but it was a divey dive, dive. Okay. And um, we saw him across the street and we're in like a line of people and they're like, QT, QT. Yeah. And he was like with two hot girls, which he always is, apparently. <laughs> and Good uh, for him. Yeah. No, why not? He's single. Single. Fuck it. Who cares? Yeah. So he like comes over. We weren't the ones that yelled QT. We were just like, holy shit. Yeah. He came over, um, talked to these fans. We're just like, oh, what's up? Ended up going inside with them, sitting at their booth, like partying with them. We were like... We didn't know the way to get QT over. Yeah. You know, because you always think to like be so cool, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just act like no big deal. Like you're at the same bar and you're cool and like maybe you'll talk to him. Right. But no, the way to hang out with Quentin Tarantino is to be like, QT, come over here. We love you. We, you know, like let's party. Let's party. Yeah. yeah. How amazing is that? It's amazing. By by the way. Very few people. That's the same way to get to us. I was just going to say. Look. If you want, if you want me to be happy and come hang out with you, you yell my name That's from it. across the street you have to do. and tell me to come over and you're going to buy me a drink yeah. and that you want to tell me how awesome I am. Yeah. I'm there. Same. Fuck, I raised with some people in the airport the other day. I was just like, all right, cool. What's that's up? That's the way to, that's the way to get like, you're going to sit down. Like, yeah, I'm going to fucking sit down. Let's mm-hmm. go. Let's hang out. Um, we were trying to be so cool. Love that guy. Once he sees how cool we are about how, no, no. He Just knows f- we know who he is and yeah. that we think he's fucking awesome. Stop exactly. acting like you don't. Yeah. <laughs> so that's why he's awesome. Uh, love him. Love this guy. Super excited for this movie. And uh, yeah, with that, we're going to get out of here. Fun show. Quick show. Wild show. Uh, Roush. Uh, yeah, Roush, 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 Roush. <laughs> uh, for Jesse Wiseman, a.k.a. The Jables. I'm Ross Patterson. This is The Revolution. Good night, everyone. Good night. Oh, my God.